Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna look at how to create this wavy 3D binary data background. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to bring Fusion Composition Clip into the timeline and then take it directly to the Fusion page. Now here, we're gonna start by building our binary data background. And we're gonna do that by bringing a text node and also a background node, and then connect the text node to the background node and then uh, let's just go ahead and project the merge node to the left viewer here. And the first thing we're going to do is to come to the text node and then uh, go to image and then turn off all the resolution. And let's change the resolution to something um, that is way much smaller. So 100 by 50 is fine. And now let's come back to text and just write a couple lines of random binary codes. Now, if we look at it, it doesn't really look much uh, at this point. So let's go ahead and fix this by coming to the text node, project it onto the left of viewer first. And then uh, let's go ahead and adjust the size uh, tracking as well as the line spacing settings. And the idea here is that we want to make it evenly spaced out. And the reason we're doing all this is so that it's going to look good when we duplicate this later on. And speaking of duplicating, let's come to the merge node and then project it onto the left viewer. So if we look at it now, it's looking a lot better and we're ready to duplicate this. So let's uh, go ahead and go to the edge parameter and select wrap instead. So now you're going to see these codes being duplicated infinitely here. And once again, we can come back to the text node and adjust the size tracking or line spacing parameters to make it look nicer. And uh, so now uh, we're ready to uh, assemble our 3D scene. So the first thing we will do is to bring in a image plane 3D node and then connect merge to it. Now let's also bring in merge 3D as well as render 3D and then let's connect everything to media all one. So now on the right viewer, we can look at the final effect and then on the left viewer, let's go to merge 3D and then project our 3D scene on there. So now we can look at our 3D scene as well as the final effect at the same time. Now let's come back to image plane 3D node and now under transform tab, we're gonna go to rotation X setting, typing minus 90. Uh, so we're turning our background here into a flat plane. Now, and the next thing we're gonna do is to create that wavy look. So to do that, we're gonna go to uh, tools and then under 3D, let's bring in displace 3D node and place it right after image plane 3D. So now the node itself doesn't really do anything at this point. We need some sort of image mapping. And we're gonna do that by bringing fast noise node and then connect it to displace 3D. Right away, we see our background here being distorted, but it doesn't look that good yet. So we're gonna make some changes to this later on. But at this point, I also wanna point out that uh, if you want, uh, you can come to the background node itself and to turn the alpha parameter all the way down to zero. This is going to give us a transparent background and it's also going to look a lot nicer as well. All right, so now let's come back to Displace 3D. Now here we're gonna bring down the scale setting uh, because right now this distortion is way too dramatic. So let's bring that uh, down quite a bit and now it's looking a little bit better. Let's also now bring more elements into our effect here as well. So we're gonna go to fast noise and then uh, turn up contrast setting uh, just a little bit though, just a little bit. Um, so very subtle changes. And also let's bring up a scale setting as well. Uh, again, a very subtle change. And then lastly, let's turn up the seeth rate just a little bit. This is going to give some really nice smooth movement to this effect. Now, if we look at what we have so far, we definitely see that we have the wavy effect going on. But one thing that kind of stands out is that the edges uh, are really harsh. Uh, they are very sharp. So uh, to fix this, um, what we're going to do is to come to the image plane 3D node and then uh, go to controls tab and just bring up the subdivisions. And uh, the thing with this is that you can actually override it with a number with any number that you like. So we're going to just bring this up quite a lot. Now we see that the edges are much smoother. They are more rounded and uh, this is uh, looking a lot better than before. Next, we're going to bring a camera 3D node and we're going to connect it to Merge 3D. Now in the camera 3D node, we can go to the transform tab and uh, change the position of the camera there, but I prefer doing it manually in the viewer. So now as you see that when I do that, all these changes are also reflected uh, in the transform tab under translation. And if we want to rotate the camera, we can click the rotation logo in the viewer 
And once again, all the changes here will be reflected uh, in the transform tab under rotation. Now, one thing we're noticing at this point is that our background has a very abrupt drop off towards the end. So we can fix this by coming to the background node itself. And then we're going to go to the image tab and then turn off auto resolution. Then we're going to bring the height parameter all the way up. So now we see this much more elongated background is looking a lot better. And we can also come to image plane 3D node, go to transform, and then under translation Z setting, we can bring this up a little, we can move this up a little so that we get more of it in front of the camera. And another thing we can do for this is to build a background. So we're going to bring another image plane 3D node connected to merge 3D. So now we're going to move this image plane all the way towards the back. And then uh, let's also change the color of it. Uh, to black and then uh, let's also go to transform and then bring the scale setting up a little so that it fills the entire screen okay so our 3d composition is really coming together and it's looking pretty good so now we are ready to light our scene and we're going to do that by bringing a spotlight node and then connect it to merge 3d now very much like camera 3d you can manually change the position of the spotlight itself but all these changes will also be reflected under the transform tab so the first thing we'll do is just to bring the spotlight all the way up to the top and then we're also going to rotate it um, so the idea here is that we want our spotlight to shine from above and down at our background so once all that is done all these changes once again will be reflected under the transform tab as well one issue though at this point is that we couldn't really see the lighting at all. So the first thing we'll do is in the left viewer, right click, and then in the menu under 3D options, turn on lighting. And then uh, we're also gonna come to the render 3D node and then check lighting there as well. So now we'll be able to see lighting not only in the 3D space, but also in the final output. Now let's come back to the spotlight node and then go to the controls tab. And we're going to change how the light looks. And the first thing we'll do is to change the decay type to linear. Then we're also going to bring down the decay rate quite a bit. So this changes the distribution of the intensity of the lighting. And we're also going to bring up the cone angle a little bit uh, to increase the coverage. Now, lastly, we're going to crank up penumbra angle. This is uh, what's going to give us this nice soft drop off towards the end of the light. And once all that is done, guys, we are pretty much there. So the next thing we're going to do is just to add a nice glowy look to it. So we can go to blur and then bring in soft glow and then place it after render 3D node and then bring down the gain setting a little bit here. So this is looking a lot better now. Now, another thing we can do at this point is to adjust the position of the spotlight, especially now that we have a glow effect to it. You can see that by changing how the spotlight is uh, shining on our background here, it's going to have a subtle impact on the overall scene. So uh, once all that is done, guys, now let's come back to the edit page and have a look at the final effect. So yeah, guys, at this point, it's, uh, it's looking really good. Now, one last thing we can do here is to add some depth to our 3D scene. And we can do that by coming to the render 3D node, change the renderer type to OpenGL renderer. And uh, under accumulation effects, let's enable it. And the first thing we will do is just to bring the DOF blur all the way down. And then just to bring it back up a touch. Uh, but one problem we're seeing is that our entire scene is now blurry. And the reason is because our focal plane is not in front of the camera. So let's come to the camera 3D node and let's go to the controls tab. And then uh, let's go to control visibility and turn on focal plane. So now as you see this green rectangle, which is our focal plane is way behind our black background. So we're gonna bring it closer by changing the focal plane setting, bring that down. Now you see that our focal plane is much closer to the camera. All right, guys, so uh, at this point, we are pretty much done. So let's come back to the edit page, uh, let this render. So yeah, guys, this is our final effect. This is the final look. I hope this tutorial helps. I hope you learned a thing or two and uh, I will see you next time.